You've heard of yoga, right? But have you heard of equestrian yoga? Today, we're going to find out how yoga can help you and your horse. No tight yoga pants required. Hi there, my name is Laura Kellame, and our guests today are Danny Chaparro of Ashva Yoga and Natalie Mendek of Mendek Media. Hi, how are you? Good morning. Good morning. Thank Where you are you so guys much, coming Laura, in from? Uh, for having us today. You're Absolutely. Welcome. <laughs> uh, Danny is an experienced registered yoga teacher through Yoga Alliance and has been teaching Hatha Yoga, restorative yoga, and teaching workshops in equestrian yoga with the horse and on the horse. And Natalie is a lifelong horse person, and her passion for horses has carried over into equine journalism. She's an eight-time American Horse Publications Equine Media Awards winner, member of the International Alliance of Equestrian Journalists, and possesses an international press card. She is also a United States Dressage Federation bronze and silver medalist. Well, congratulations, and thank you for being here with me today. Thank you for having us, and good yeah, morning, world, from Castle good Rock, Colorado, you. where Danny and I are both tuning in. Yep. Excellent. And my name is Laura Kellen May. Welcome to Equestrian Skill Builders. If you'd like to improve your riding and training, win more ribbons at your next horse show, or generally like other horsey related stuff, then you're in the right place. I empower riders to go from no direction to feeling confident, in control, and in harmony with their horse so they can win a ribbon at their horse show and enjoy their horse. I'm a competition coach specialist, high performance trained. Equestrian Canada Senior Judge and Stewart, and as a live show producer, I can help you create a successful weekly broadcast. <laughs> that one also always breaks me I up, love that right? One. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. All right. So thank you both for being here with me. And uh, so let's just go right into your book. Um, tell us a little bit about your book and who the book is for. What is the book? What's it called? Who's it for? So we wrote this book to reach out to the horse world as a whole. This it's designed for every horse and every rider. Doesn't matter how old you are, how old your horse is, what style of riding you do, what your abilities are, what your horse's abilities are. It's a way for every person to connect with every horse. So a way to bring some more focus and some more connection to your daily uh, interactions with your horse. Mm -hmm. So we, we um, laid it out with, you know, step-by-step -step instructions, um, very detailed, but yet simple, so that you can just follow along. Um, if, if I may uh, show the book, it is in a great, here we go, over here, in a spinal binding, so it actually lays flat, so you can put it in the barn, on the floor, you can follow along, you can use it at home, it doesn't close up on you, which is a great thing <laughs> if you're trying to things. Should I show the, the video that we have of the book? Yeah, can that'd I be great. Okay, um, yeah, so let's show yeah. the video. They've got this really cool video. I love that it's got the spine in it so that you can lay it flat. And I'm guessing it's not meant to it's not meant to stay on your bookshelf. It's meant to be taken out and put in the aisle of the barn floor is what you said. Okay, That's so let's right. just look at it. Here you can see, uh, so uh, Danny or uh, Natalie, can you tell us like what's what's going on here? You got a picture on the left and uh, writing yeah. on the right. right. So we exactly. designed it with Danny is our model for all the poses. This is her beautiful quarter horse tank, who was the most amazing horse to do photographs with. So Danny is modeling all the poses. And um, you'll see on the left each time uh, how you perform the pose. And then on the right in the text, it, you have the name of the pose in Sanskrit and then also in English. And it walks you step by step through each pose. And then there's ways we call modifications. So if the pose is a little more challenging, like in this picture here, in the little box, there's a modification. It's how to make it easier. And then we also have for some of the poses for more advanced uh, riders, ways to make it a little, uh, a little harder. And then on the right, there's tips that explain 
things to keep in mind while you're doing the pose. And we also have the benefits of each one. And Danny can uh, talk to you more in detail about all those different aspects of it. But that's how we have the book laid out. And there are uh, poses you can do with your horse. So when you're still on the ground, there are poses you can do in the saddle like you see here in this picture and there's poses that benefit the horse specifically so we have it with on and for your horse yeah i've got some i've got some pictures too that uh that we can show here so um okay so this is one of danny this is one of the doing yoga on the horse mm -hmm. Correct. It's a seated twist. Um, if you know people have practiced yoga on mat, they have done twists in all kinds of different poses. Um, most likely, we, we we do twist. You can do it on your chair if you're just sitting right there. Um, the nice thing is when we practice, the book is out starting on the ground, so you will see that similar pose standing. Um, doing a, a standing twist and uh, when you get on the horse what I usually ask my students is just to notice the difference and I say on the, ground or on the yoga mat you can always cheat a little bit because the pelvis moves now when you're in the saddle when you're on the horse um, you're more stationary so then you can really realize okay where is my range of motion to the right where is it to the left um, and the whole purpose of equestrian yoga is to really find out you know, our strength, our weaknesses, and how do we affect with our body, with our energy, with our emotions, how do we affect the horse? Because ultimately what we want is we want that connection with the horse. We want to be a better rider. We want to be stronger. We want to be more balanced. We also want to be more calm. Um, and what we often don't realize that our imbalances that we all have in the body, whether it's habits, whether it's injuries, you know, whether it's just uh, things that we do in life that happen to us directly affect our horse. Um, it starts with our breath. It starts with the energy, but it also starts with our physical body. Um, so doing these poses that we are playing in the book and just bringing more awareness to, okay, what am I really doing when I'm sitting on the horse? You know, where are my sit bombs? Is that one digging in maybe a little bit deeper? Maybe it's a little bit lighter on the side. How does my horse react to that? And it's amazing to me um, and to, you know, the students that I work with to see how does the horse respond? How does it truly affect my writing? And how do I become a better writer if I start with myself working on those um, sometimes very subtle, very subtle issues? So it sounds like it's not just uh, just about doing the poses. It's it's you have to kind of understand how you are affecting the horse as well, right? Correct. And I think with everyone, um, you know, when you hear the word yoga, which means the union of body, mind, spirit, um, when we not say equestrian yoga, it's the connection with the horse as well. It starts for most of us, most of our journeys, as I call them, starts with the physical aspects, right? But then after a while, you realize it's so much more than just the outside. It's our energy. It's our breathing. It's, you know, how we approach things um, that kind of like, it kind of sneaks in on you, right? It's not maybe the first time you practice this, but then over time you just become more aware, you become more mindful, you can become more sensitive. And uh, we know as horse people, horses are probably one of the most sensitive animals out there. I mean, nothing goes past them, right? We know they react. Um, and so, yeah, so that is why, you know, we are playing this book. Um, it's more than poses for sure. But you can start with the poses and um, that's what it's intended for. Take this book become stronger, become more balanced, um, become more flexible, and see where it takes you, see where it takes you. So Danny was talking about the imbalances that we all have. Right. And I think every single writer, no matter what you do, has had that moment where you realize you're stronger on one side than the other, and yeah. it throws your horse out of balance. You're stiff on one side, and you get on another horse and you think, why does this horse do the exact same thing as my other horse? Is it me? You know, we've all been there. So that's one of the things that this book really addresses. And um, Danny, why don't you talk us through breath? And, uh, you know, we've all been at a horse show. We're in the warm up. We're a little nervous. We're not breathing right. Everybody's been there. Danny, if you can talk to us a little bit about sure. how our breath impacts the horse. Sure. So um, uh, breath 
what I, what I, what we teach in this book and what we outline in this book as well is when you just take a moment and you, you get on the horse, you sit there quietly um, to focus on your breathing and uh, you want to count the length of the inhale that's natural to you. So if you just close your eyes and you just take a big inhale, you know, not forcing, not, not straining, um, and how, how long would that take? Maybe a three count and then make the exhalations. Um, at least as long, ideally longer than um, the inhalations. And uh, what it does, our exhalations are tied in with our parasympathetic nervous system. That's our calming part of the nervous system. The inhalation is the flight, the fight, um, stress um, um, part of our, our nervous system. So when we focus on the exhalations, we not only calm ourselves down, but because we are calmer, our energy transfers into the horse, um, the horse you know, suddenly becomes um, calmer as well. Um, so that is one aspect of the breathing. Um, then also we have in the book outlined how then you can um, connect your breath or synchronize your breath with the horse. And to me, that's the most fascinating because the horses breathe on average eight to 12 times per minute. Um, so one inhale, one exhale is counted as one breath. Humans on average, you know, between 12 and 18 times. So we breathe a little bit faster, however, when we sit on the horse and you really bring sensitivity to your inner legs and feel the horse's diaphragm, feel the horse's breath, sometimes it's very choppy, it's very weird, it's very awkward. And um, I would ask anyone listening at home, um, try it, you know, just try it with your horse, sit there and notice how is your horse breathing. Then try and synchronize your breath, no matter how weird, no matter how choppy they hold their breath, and see if you can just for a little bit synchronize your breath with the horse's breath and notice so, if the horse's breath changes. Well, so Danny, what does um what does matching your breath to the horse's breath, what does that do to your horse's performance and your performance? Why so is it what so does, important? So what it does, um, when, when you try this with your horse, when you breathe, when you synchronize your breath with your horse. Um, it makes the horse's breath more rhythmic. It relaxes the horse. So you'll notice the horse might take a big break, choppy, sometimes take a big sigh. Um, but then after a while, it becomes more rhythmic. The horse is not so tense. So, and we all know when we are more relaxed, the horse is more relaxed, the performance improves, right? Because they're not under pressure, under, under yeah, stress or tension. No. So for a, let's say for a hunter jumper rider, someone's going in the competition, will this, will this help their performance? Or if somebody is doing a working equitation pattern or a reining pattern, will, will this exercise, does it matter what you're doing? It doesn't really matter with discipline. It's, it's good on the trail. It's good in the arena, on the show ring, um, because oftentimes we forget to breathe, right? Um, I have done <laughs> exactly. on the show and you jump the whole course and then at the end you're like, <laughs> because you totally yeah. forgot to breathe. Yeah. But if you're more aware of it and you um, synchronize your breath instead of it and say, okay, I'm gonna inhale for three strides in my canner, I'm gonna exhale for four strides. So you stay with the rhythm, you oxygenate your body, you keep your body in sync, you're calmer, and yet you have more energy to perform better. And your horse can perform better because you're not all tense. Our breath right. truly mimics our riding. If you think about it, if you take an inhale and you pause, it lifts you out of the saddle, it squeezes everything. Right? And yeah. uh, so that's a big part of, um, of um, just being aware, being aware of your breathing. Yeah, okay. This is, a, oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> that's okay. I just wanted to know, uh, Natalie and Danny, how did you two people meet? Like, did you know each other before you got together on the book? So uh, I write for a variety of different magazines, and I always have on my radar interesting topics. And I knew that somebody here in my town teaches equestrian <laughs> yoga, and I thought, well, that is a great topic. And I reached out to Danny, and we did an article for Horse Illustrated. And while I was working with Danny on that article, I was like, you know, Danny, we can make a book out of this. And that was kind of the germ of that idea. And so we started talking about it about a year later. And right after we began saying, okay, we can do this. That was when, that was February of 2020. So then 
the pandemic started and I was like, well, I've got a lot of time now. And my daughter is a photographer and she is a college student. So she had to come home. So in March, we were like, well, let's get this ball rolling. And that's when we started working on the book. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah, when Natalie Let's first go. approached me, when Natalie first approached me um, writing a book, I'm not a big writer, and I told her that I hate writing. I can barely get a newsletter out, you know, for my own business. I'm like, and now you come here and you want to write a book. I'm like, I'm all good about, you know, um, doing my yoga, <laughs> teaching, talking, but writing is not my thing. So Natalie is perfect. She does an awesome job. She's taken, you know, these words. Um, sometimes a long explanation of a pose I sent her, and she just made this magical, magical thing um, that is just really easy to understand, gets to the point, and it's just fabulous. So I hope many, many people will actually, you know, really enjoy it, use this book, and I hope it will help them in any aspect of their writing, of their performance. It was fun um, doing the photographs in particular. This is at Danny's own farm and you see there in the background is the rampart range those are foothills to the rockies so um the photos were really fun to do it was it was fun working with danny and my daughter caitlin mendick and tank and then we also have in the front and the back of the book we have collages of all different writers right. and these are people from our local horse community We've got a hunter jumper rider. We've got two vaulters. We have three Western riders and we have a dressage rider mm -hmm. and they are all there with their horses. So we wanted to really illustrate how everyone can do this. Our youngest model is 15 and our oldest is in her seventies. Okay. We've got a giraffe and an Appaloosa. So, a warm this blood. so this person, she's the, must be the vaulter. Is this your daughter? This is one of my daughters. This is our okay. photographer also. Yeah. So actually I took this picture of her, but this is um, a, a Premarin draft mare and one of, and our photographer and the vaulter. And so she's doing chair pose here and also four leg stretch of the horse. So this is a great one to do before you start riding. Okay. Yeah. So this is a good one to do before you start riding. Um, and why is that? Why, for, for people who don't know, like, why would this be a good one to do as part of your warm up before you even get on? Danny, you want to take that? Sure, sure. It's a, it's a nice little stretch for the horses. Um, and some also it releases some hair that gets bunched up under the girth, you know, when you tie them up so they can really stretch into it. Um, and uh, in the book, what you will also find is that we try to synchronize or, or find parallels between for the rider shoulder stretch and then for a horse shoulder stretch. So this pose that we have up on the screen is um, the, the front leg stretch where, um, you know, you gently, you know, gently lengthen the horse's front legs um, a little bit across the midline so they're not hyped in the knee and we have that also outlined in the book. Just little things to to keep in mind because um, you know we want this practice to be safe for everyone for horse and rider um, and we want you know highlight the benefits that the poses the poses have. Okay so we do have a question here Allison thank you so much Allison for the for the question are you trying to synchronize your breathing so it's going back to the breathing Mm -hmm. Are you trying to synchronize your breathing to the horse's breathing or to their stride? So that's, that's a great a, question. Thank you for okay. clarifying that. Yeah, and that's a thank you for that. For the that's a good question. So I was actually talking about two things. And I need to clarify that. Um, so the synchronizing with the with the, the breath of the horse is just something for you to try, just to see. Okay, how does the horse react, and, and just to bring awareness to the horse's breath when you're actually off riding. I would recommend that you synchronize your breath with the horse's stride, okay? So, you know, you take, you start out in a walk, you inhale, 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 three steps, and then you exhale four, five, six steps. Um, the more you practice it, the easier it gets to exhale. I know. And you're when you did that, I just, I, just, okay. <laughs> I just did that. I just did that. Take a deep yeah. breath. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Uh, and we were talking ahead. about using this like in the show ring. This is also really useful in anything you do in your daily riding. You know, you, you're, got, you're on a fresh horse and you're heading to the scary corner. 
Remember to synchronize your breathing. You can use it in any any situation you find yourself in when you're with your horse. Right. Right. And so I do thing, have another. Go ahead, go ahead, Danny. Um, just one more thing for the, for the breathing because it's such a big aspect. Um, when you synchronize your breath with the horse's movement, regardless if you just stay, let's say, at a walk, what you will notice that the horse, if the horse speeds up or slows down even though in the same gait and it's just subtle again sometimes it's very subtle if you're not paying attention you might not notice that oh my horse is about to go into a trap right um but if you're breathing and you set the rhythm with the stride of the horse you will notice immediately does it go faster is it going to slow down um especially on the trail as well like nanny mentioned sometimes it's a little scary out there um, so you really support the horse with your breath and having that rhythm and having that confidence and leadership that the horse and, can and horses they so can feel when when you are holding your breath because you just whether you know it or not you are tightening and as soon as they feel that tension and tightness their flight response kicks in there so yeah breathing is important great question though Allison thank you so much now you did mention about uh, competition people and we're on the trail. So we have, we've seen Danny with her Western tack and now we have this person here. Oops. I want to add it to the stream. There we go. This person here. Uh, she's got a bareback bear pad on. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, um, I leave it up to my students, um, how they want to practice. You know, I have actually students that don't even have a bareback pad on. They have nothing on there, just bareback on there. On there. Uh, equestrian yoga practice that I teach is a very gentle practice. So it's not, you're not going to do a down dog. You're not going to be, you know, upside down on the horse. While you could do that, <laughs> certainly. And there's people out there, you see it, um, on social media of, of those poses. That is not what I what I teach. Um, it's mainly focused on really building that connection, finding that range of motion, finding you know, imbalances. And uh, and this is Lana here, one of my regular students um, who practices a seated twist, and she just likes having the bareback pad just to be a little bit closer to her horse. And one of the things we remind readers in the book is to be kind and gentle to your own self and your own body and your horse's body as well. And so some of the poses, we did have the question come up from one of our copy editors, who is also a dressage writer, was, how, you know, introducing your horse to some of the horse poses. And, um, you know, the, the, the thread for that was to be slow and be gentle and let the horse start to relax into it, just like anything that you introduce the horse to. And you'll find that they start to breathe and sigh, they'll chew. But all of this is taking time. There's no like end goal. It's just connection. It's deepening everything that you do together with your horse and, and finding that internal balance and that physical balance. Right. So you mentioned, um, uh, Natalie, the working with your horse. Uh, so here's a, an image here right. that that's, yeah. um, also that Danny. That was actually the one that we were talking about. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> <Perfect. Flora. laughs> I'm a mind reader. Did you, you not are. know that? <laughs> so, uh, so this one, it's, it's kind of difficult to see here. I just want to see if I can make it a little bigger oh great. there we go yeah there you go. okay That's but better. it's got yeah. this stupid thing here okay let's get this back again there <laughs> you can, so you can just so you can see what's what's happening there is that you are um you've got the you're on the left hand side of the horse and you've got the right hand back leg and you're crossing it in behind the other leg correct uh -huh. So, what, so how, how would this benefit the rider and the horse? Is this mostly for the horse or this mostly for the rider? This, this pose is for the horse. And uh, this is a nice hip opener. So you, if you look at the picture here, if, you, you know, if you're standing behind him and you look on the right side, it kind of drops the pelvis. And uh, so the, from the, um, as I joined from the sacroiliac like really joint of the horse to the right, um, it's kind of it's hard to see now. Um, right here. You see how it kind of dips, mm -hmm. and it oh, kind right of here. lengthens exactly. Yeah, thank you, Laura. Pointing that's that's really helpful. Yep, that's great. Um, so right here where you just pointed is where it kind of drops the hip, 
and then also stretches those gluteus muscles and, and the, um, the hip joint muscles. And if you look down at his actually hoof, you can see he's kind of on the toe. He kind of cocks his leg there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he relaxes all that tendons, you know, all the connective tissue. And the horses, believe it or not, you put them there and you, if you press it a few times, they just stay there. I often do that with my horses. Um, you know, I put them in the spot, in the position of pose, if you want to call it a pose. And, you know, go into the tuck room, grab something else, and they're still standing exactly like that because it really feels good for them to relax one side. And then, of course, you have the other side because you don't want to, you know, cause imbalances. Um, but, yeah, you can also sometimes feel horses um, release gas because it does help the digestive system to just kind of things up and relax things a little bit. So that's also an extra benefit, you know, to help them get that stuff going. <laughs> So, so that's a good a good stretch for the horse's uh, hindquarters. So that's that's correct. just one mm -hmm. of the of the um, the things here. Let me just see if I can get yeah. another one here. That's that's one that you were talking about that you start uh, in a relaxed way. Uh, introduce it. So how you Natalie, you mentioned that uh, you should start slowly and build up these exercises. I guess that's just with any exercise, right? But, so yeah. how would you start, for example, let's just show this one here. How do I add it? I want to do this. Oops, sorry, wrong button. There. So this is another one where you are taking that uh, right hind and stretching it forward and underneath the horse. So how would you start to introduce this movement to your horse if you wanted to do this exercise with your horse? So we would recommend the other one that you just had first. Do the leg crossing behind and then move on. Yeah, exactly. So the horse is comfortable with you picking up the leg for something else than, you know, a trim or shoeing um, or cleaning their feet because that's what the horse is used to, that you're on the same side of them to pick up the foot, not on the opposite. Sometimes it's very confusing at first to them. Like, what are you doing? This is not what we usually do, right? So we would and start with this, and then once the horse is comfortable, then you go to the more advanced way you stretch the leg underneath their torso mm -hmm, to this one. Okay. And, look, um, I, guess, and I guess the first the first step would be to pick up the hoof from the opposite side, like as part of your daily routine to uh, instead of picking, I'll pick up the left hand hind leg and then pick up the right hind leg from the same side so that you can exactly. uh, start getting them used to picking their legs up from the same side. And I guess likewise on the other side as well. Right. Yes. And every pose we have in the book, um, you perform in in each direction right so you use both sides of the body and then also for the poses where you're on the ground you all you you also perform them for yourself on both sides of the body so everything is totally symmetrical for your body and your horse's body i also want to point out too that danny you are very your own posture is very important when you're doing this exercise as well Yes, thank you. And we do highlight this in um, with the tip section on in right. this book because we want to make sure that you're not hurting your back. You're not hurting your back. Um, so in in this in this pose, I'm doing it like a chair pose, like right, where you do a squat. You want to make sure you have that neutral, strong, um, neutral back and strong core to support this forward fold to hold the weight of the horse's leg. Um, to have your feet set properly, not one turned out, one turned in. So, you know, little subtle um, nuances. And uh, the way we outlined the book is, that, yes, you will do a chair pose by yourself on the ground. And um, in that chair pose, we describe, okay, this is what you look for. When you look at your feet, you want to make sure your toes are pointing forward. You want to make sure the feet are about hip width apart. Um, we talk about in the book, you know, modifications. If your knees hurt, if your back hurts, that should be a big red flag. No, no, don't push it. Don't do it. There's other ways to strengthen. You don't have to do the pose um, as it is shown in the book. There's always ways to modify. And right. Uh, we've so all had it sounds like it's a complete book that 
covers off what you should do, what the horse should do. Yes. You know, it's, it's not just do these poses. It's, it's what, what you should be. Right. What you Absolutely. should be thinking about and breathing and, and right. about your connection with the horse, not just do these exercises and right. you start here and you'll end up here. It's, it's the growth that's going to happen when mm -hmm. you, when you do do these exercises. Right. Yeah. So, I think it's really interesting. Like, um, like that last picture we were looking at how we have the chair pose. So chair pose for the rider is one that, that we have earlier in the book where you are, you're next to your horse and you're working on yourself. And then later we have this pose that's designed for the horse, but it incorporates a skill that you've already um, mastered. And, you know, like Danny was saying with the tips, we really highlight some things like protecting your knees and protecting your lower back so that, um, you don't end up straining yourself in any way. And it's important to remember that nothing's supposed to hurt. This is supposed to feel good. This is supposed to be a good experience for yourself and for your horse. Right. And you don't Excellent. have to start, you don't have to do the whole book. If you got five minutes, you can do one or two things. <laughs> oh, it's not like point. you're going to go, oh, today is the day I'm going to spend an hour working on this. You yeah. And you can do in the saddle one thing, you know, while you're getting started. You, you don't, it's not like a giant endeavor. Right. So I, I was going to ask as well, that's a great point. Why do you think most people don't include these exercises with their horse or with themselves? I mean, I, I'm thinking, you know, as a, as a going out to competitions, you often see people like what Danny said, they don't breathe. Like why are they not including this as part of their pre-show prep? Or why do you think people don't do these exercises? I think some people might be a little intimidated by the idea. You know, they might think, oh, I'm too old or it's too hoo-hoo or something like that, you know. And this is meant to dispel all of those myths that it is really something simple. I think it's a habit that you have to create outside the show yeah. ring. Um, you have to do it every time, you know, even if you just go out to the barn and you just want to exercise the horse for 20 minutes make it the priority to yourself to just remind yourself breathe breathe even if you have to write it on your hand on your palm you know get on the horse and say breathe and then just write for 10 minutes and breathe and everything that we do i mean we humans it has to become a habit to do it all the time not just in the practice at home but then also in showing if you don't practice it at home, it sure is not going to happen when you when you actually need it, when you're under pressure, when you are in that show ring. Right. It has to become second nature. It has to start as a habit that you start to become second nature. Just like if you're driving a car, you have to read the road sign and look at the road at the same time. And that's a skill that you have to develop, right? right. Same sort of yeah. Same sort of idea. Right. It's got to be start as a habit and build on that habit so it becomes second nature that is so important so important um so what are the main the what are the main benefits that people who have been doing this these poses and this yoga with their horse what is the main benefit that they're seeing and then well, i want to main... talk about where we can get this book <laughs> so danny why don't you tell us all about how amazing this is yeah, so the, the main benefit is really um, you become more flexible, you become stronger, you become more balanced, you become more aware um, in, your own, in your own body and then take this um, horse and, and build that stronger relationship with the horse. Um, oftentimes, you know, trust is broken between you and your horse from whatever reason, injuries, you know, accidents that happen. Um, again, you know, having that connection, having that awareness, practicing these pauses just brings you back into that partnership that we all want with our horses. We want that perfect relationship. We want to be the best rider that we can. We want to come back from injury strong, but yet gentle at the same time, supportive, not pushy, not forcing anything. So um, we have this book outlined. Um, maybe just one thing I, I do want to point out is sometimes, you know, look at these poses, they can be a little intimidating. Um, I have little toys 
<laughs> so this is a, a piece of, of lead rope. Uh, don't ever throw your lead ropes away. They make great little toys. So let's say, you know, you practice some of these poses and you can't reach down to your leg. It was like, I'm going to be able to do that. Take a piece of lead rope. Use it as an arm extender, as I call it, to reach that foot. Um, which, you know, which, or, pose, which pose would you use that for? So this would be for the dancer pose. Um, dancer pose is where, and I can just stand up here for a second, um, where you grab your leg. I don't know if you can even see this on the camera. Okay, now, I can, I can do yeah. this, but some people, they might want to use a strap and just use a strap. There to, it is. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. That's exactly it. So we show up. Oh, so that's right? the alternative for uh, if you're starting out and you're not as flexible. This is the, that's what you can do is you, you put the, the helper around your ankle. Exactly. And we have a picture of that as well. And, oh, uh, you have that in the book. Mm -hmm. And we have that in the book as well. So we show, okay, this is a pose if you can reach your leg. And this is a pose where maybe today it's not going to happen. You know, maybe you did a big high day before and you're a little stiffer or you have um, a knee I think that's in this one here. It's in this, it's in here. I think this, let so. me just let it run through i think that is in one of the pictures in this video isn't it it might yeah it might we're be getting to it <laughs> stay tuned there, there it is there we go yeah on the on the you can see on the on that little, little the small insert picture. Mm -hmm. the, the insert here yeah okay perfect so so that's why like natalie mentioned you know we really tried to make this book for everybody it shouldn't be intimidating start where you are go from there build slowly do what you can it's a practice it's not yoga perfect it's yoga practice <laughs> right it and it, it could be fun you're not like i'm gonna do this this is supposed I like to be fun. that <laughs> okay so there are some pictures of uh different people okay so before we do that um let me see. Uh, so how do people get your book? So we've talked about the book and, and, and we understand about the yoga and how important it is for just when you get on, even just to think about your breathing and think about your horse's breathing. I mean, that would be a great first step, but where do people go to get this book? So do you have the link for our Etsy shop there? Yes, I do. I'm going to put it up on the screen and then I'm going to put it also in the uh, comments there. There so it is. That's, that's your, that's your shop. That's our Etsy shop. So we, um, one of the things that I really like about the horse world is how small it is and how much we all have in common. And this book was a really fun collaboration of a lot of horsewomen. So not only do we have Danny, the yogi, we have a vaulter that's our photographer. We have a dressage writer that was our designer. That's Nicole Bizarro. She did all the formatting and layout for our book. And we had another dressage writer that copy edited and a yoga a lady that also copy edited. So that was really cool, bringing all these different people together. And then um, my business published the book and we printed it locally. So it is available through us on our Etsy shop. Excellent. So you from either of our websites. If that's if right. You yep. Like, you okay, there's the, the, there's what it looks like, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, perfect. So I wanted to, good. And also you say from your, I'm just going to put the, also from your um, Mendic Media, and I'm going to copy that as well. And also from Ashva Yoga, you can also purchase it there. Is that right? That's mm -hmm. right. Yep. And if you wonder right, what so. Ashva means, Ashva is Sanskrit for horse. So this Ashva is, is horse. Yeah, so Sanskrit is an old ancient <laughs> Indian language, and that means horse. So. Oh, that is so cool. Okay, so, oh, yes, and we wanted to talk about the book giveaway, too. That's right. Now's your chance to get a free book. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ashba Yoga. Well, we don't come to, okay, it doesn't like that very much. I think we got another comment here. I'm just trying to see. Okay, synchronize. No, okay. Yes, so that is the 
that is your Etsy page. Excellent. And also I wanted to also show what it looks like. There's a, there was another page too, right? That was, um, the, the actual book yes. link page. Okay. I'm going to put that in as well. I'm just going to show it. They can buy it right from here. Can they yes. not? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you click on the, the cover picture where it's, okay. it'll, uh, It'll pull the book up. Oh, this one right here? Um, no, uh, down lower. This one? Yep. Oh, where it says to... There it is, purchase. right there. Perfect. And you don't have to have an Etsy account to shop on Etsy. Okay. If, uh, for folks that are, are not familiar with the platform, you can, again, you can purchase on their site as a guest as well. And it's all, everything's encrypted. And if you happen to be in the area and uh, come to live practice, I always have the box with me. Natalie has the box with her. So, yeah, get a little local advantage, I guess. <laughs> oh, awesome. Allison says, wonderful photography. Yes, yeah. very good photography. Love yeah. it. Caitlin yes. did an amazing job. She really did. And, she was so patient with us. <laughs> so. And the horse. I was just going to say the horse. Yeah. Allison also says the horse is very quiet. Like he, he was amazing. <laughs> like he knows what yoga is about that horse. Yeah. And you know, it's, um, uh, it's, it's interesting because when I first started equestrian yoga, um, not on, on, on this horse, on, on tank, but on my um, previous horse, um, who was a thoroughbred. And uh, the horses have to learn equestrian yoga just like we do equestrian yoga because some of the things we do on the side, in the saddle or on the ground with them, they're not used to that. That's not what you usually do, what an average person does. Um, so they learn um, with us, and uh, which is kind of nice, nice to see. Excellent. Yes, okay. So, um, right. <laughs> that's that's me and Danny when we finish the book. <laughs> With a glass of wine in hand. Ah, dang, we did it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so I just want to also say this broadcast is sponsored by Equestrian Skill Builders. Become a thinking rider. You'll progress faster, ride effectively, and be extraordinary. If you can get my free mini course called Ride in Harmony. Say goodbye to bad rides and being understood by your horse just got easier. You can find out how I'm going to put the link in the comments. So thank you so much for having us today, Laura. This has well, been really fun. Are, thank you. Yes. Well, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And I'm hoping that I know that I'm going to go now when next time I put my foot in the stirrup, I am going to breathe and I did, before we go, I did want to show some more pictures of the different people because you, you, you show, um, I mean, Danny's on the horse, but there is, there are many different people that you have in the horse. And if, if it's okay, if I flip through some Please of the, do. Sure. Yes, okay. Absolutely. So I want to share the screen. Just give me a second. Hold tight while I share the screen. Again, with the pictures, it's uh, collage photos, share. So this picture, I have to say, I was reluctant to show it because I, I understand now that, that this is a vaulting person and she's wearing proper vaulting attire, right? <laughs> yes. But it's, it's the, <laughs> the, the- You were freaked by the shoes. <laughs> I was freaked by the shoes and the lovely giant horse- feet close to <laughs> shoes but then i thought okay this person is dressed appropriately for the discipline that she's riding in so yes. i thought okay uh, and uh this is your daughter and what is her experience vaulting she's an fei level vaulter we have our own family vaulting team velocity vaulters and uh she does individual and pas de deux okay and this is her vaulting horse that's right Beautiful. She was a Primarin and then an Amish plow horse, and now she is a vaulting horse. An Amish plow horse. She was. My goodness. She's had a busy life. This mare could write her own book. She could. <laughs> 
that is amazing. So this is an FEI vaulting horse. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to make note of this and we're going to have you on again, I'm sure. Okay. So this is, and what's her name? 417. She's Ophelia. Ophelia. Okay. Again, mm-hmm. same uh, person and horse. Cute. Your daughter's very flexible. She is. Yes, she is. <laughs> Okay, so this one, she's leaning right against the horse. Mm-hmm. And what what are what is the um, stretching of this one? What what what? So this is um, hamstring stretches and uh, adductor inner inner thigh muscles, and this is a variation. If someone um, is not able to quite the ground yet, you can lean against the horse. And, uh, you know, bring your torso up higher so it's not as intense. And, again, this is um, how to just gradually get into the poses little by little, a little bit deeper. And this is also kind of a fun way to bring different things together. So this is, you know, um, as Danny was saying, like a way to 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 get into the pose. And it's also a way to connect with your horse. You can really feel the breathing. You can feel your horse's muscles. So it's bringing different things together simultaneously. I'm, I was thinking, though, that, that this horse, it looks like she's kind of wondering, what the heck <laughs> are you doing? Like, what the heck? I don't know that. Dude. That's exactly right. Yeah. I'm not sure what's happening, but, right? But, yep. yeah. Okay, so this is uh, the um, the one we talked about the, with the woman on the, uh, mm-hmm. the bareback pad. But, yeah. again, this is not, is she a teenager, this woman? No, she's a, she's a grown-up adult. Um and uh, um, she does the seated twist, Liana. She's one of my regular students, uh, which is always really nice when, as a teacher, you see them progress um, as a person. And then also, of course, is how they change over time. So it's just really amazing to, to see them together, building that trust. Yeah, and that's, a, that's the same student. Um, that's kind of doing- a shoulder opener. Yep, it's a, it's a shoulder opener and strengthener. So what she's doing, she has her arms out and she's drawing the shoulder blades in and together to work the um, trapezius and muscles on the back because we all have a tendency to round, especially as women. Yeah. We lose that strength in the upper back. So this is just a way just to open, again, to have that expansion in the breath, um, you know, widen, but then also to strengthen the upper back muscles at the same time. And she's always smiling, which is cool. <laughs> Yes, and this is one of my older students, Ellie, um, with her horse, and uh, she's doing a lateral stretch on the ground. And again, when you perform it on both sides, you kind of get a feel for okay, where am I a little bit stiffer today? Where am I yeah. open? And so <laughs> <that's>, <laughs> I know what you're doing the rest of the day. She's like, yes, ah, exactly. I go out to the stable and do some work. Okay, yeah. uh, and I want to show this. The, I mean, we've had three different well four different models you uh, a young person who's an international athlete we had uh one of your regular students who comes regularly who uh, looks like maybe she's competitive or maybe a recreational rider i don't know yep she's but, a recreational rider mm-hmm. yep. uh, and then we have uh this person who's enjoying your horse and has uh, taken up these poses to help strengthen and keep herself supple for her riding and for her horse. And Ellie's legs always get longer, she tells me. Every time we practice, her legs get longer, she says. (laughs) I love this photo right here. It's cool, isn't it? it? Yep, really good. It's, It's so powerful. I mean, it looks like the horse is kind of leaning into the the movement even. Yeah, it's, you can really see the bond. The okay, this is when I think of yoga. This is what I think: a dancer, <laughs> right? And this is a youngster. Voice. This is my other daughter. She's also a vaulter. Uh, this, yeah. This is obviously not our vaulting horse, however, but he enjoys the. Uh, <laughs> he enjoys everything. <laughs> so when you do movements, is it good to uh, keep one hand on the horse to keep that connection? Well, it, it helps it with balance too, right? I mean, you can certainly do it without touching the horse, but it's nice to be with the horse. It's kind of like your partner right. um, to connect with them. And 
yeah, it's a, it's a nice, it's a nice touch, nice touch, Lori. <laughs> So this is a dressage rider and a young warm blood. And this horse was just recovering from an injury and just getting started back under saddle again. So this was something that she was able to do together with this horse. Excellent. A great way to develop that connection. So what do you say to people who say, I'm not doing that flaky stuff? <laughs> just say think, I mean, think, don't think, think of think, it I, yeah right i mean i mean like, so like for example I'll go to the stable this afternoon and i said okay before we get on people we're going to do a few stretches and da, 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 and start breathing then they're going to say i'm not paying you for that nonsense just think of it as as um an activity as an athlete right because all right. of us are athletes and all athletes have to stretch and all athletes have to be able to breathe and they have to be strong right 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 what a it gorgeous helps. horse it helps. isn't gorgeous she beautiful horse. yeah <laughs> both of them they are lovely I mean, I mean even simple something simple as that to practice to your with your breathing that simple act I think would help bring awareness to everything. The present. Absolutely. And that's yeah. what she's doing. Just become present. How do I stand? How do I breathe? How do I show up more today? Where's my mind? Where's my head? But, and what's, that's what's how they, goal, you connect. Maybe. Yeah. How, that's how you connect with your horse. Right. Oh, I love this one too. Isn't it cool? Yes. I mean, I can. Yeah, Marcy. Mm -hmm. That's. It's all through here, right? As you say, we get the tech neck and the computer and we start curling up into the fetal. That really helps open up. Now, Natalie, when you're riding, you dressage rider, uh, do you do these exercises before you put your foot in the stirrup? Well, I certainly should more often than I do. <laughs> I feel like I'm always working from one activity to the next. <laughs> Oh, that's also yes, I mean, convince this. These are for you know every single one of us, and you know, like I said, even if you just have just a few minutes, you can still do so much for yourself, for your riding, and for your horse. I like that you were you very know. honest about that. <laughs> yeah. Just pick pick one or two. If you if I, you know you you practice um, when I teach a practice, it's a two hour practice, and you haven't even done any riding. That's just for the equestrian yoga part. Um, that's why I pick your one or two or find, you know, find a spot in your body where you feel like you need more strength or more flexibility or where you feel like you're a little bit um, needing more help. And, and just try those. You don't, you don't have to do the whole book. You probably won't um, in a setting. Um, but just pick what's, what works for you. Pick the, the weaker spots, the one you want to improve on. Um, if you feel like you might is always going somewhere then maybe just stand there for 10 seconds breathe and uh, be present or you know make an intention i always ask set an intention for what you want today with your horse and start there this is your hunter rider comp that's comp right competitor. yes mm -hmm. yes and and uh, it's nice seeing her right she's doing the breathing and this is a little bit of a hot horse so this was a, a great um a great thing to show for her with this horse. Mm -hmm. And you can see your hands. When you go back for a second. If you can see your hands um, holding the low belly and the low back, um, yep. that's just a reminder to breathe into the hands, to feel the expansion and then the contraction again, to really have that deep breathing down into the pelvis, to kind of make yourself heavier, but also more relaxed. Again, just, you know, little tools for minutes because when we breathe shallow, it's all up in the chest. And what we want to do when we're riding, we want to bring it down into the saddle, into the pelvis, into the into the sitting bones. This is one of the, another chest opener. That's a cat cow. Um, okay, well, sorry. That the spinal yeah. um, flexion extension. Um, again, you know, rocking the pelvis forward and back in the saddle on the horse gives you that awareness, okay, where is center, right? We talk a lot about now in, in most of this, about center, center riding or centering riding, um, that you want to feel your pelvis just right, not too far back tilted, not too far forward. And this is a nice way to just kind of get that awareness. 
Yeah, eagle pose, nice shoulder stretch again. We're back mm -hmm. at the beginning. Yep. yep. Excellent. Well, though, thank you so much. And um, do you have any final words for us? How about I just want to thank you, Laura, for the yeah. opportunity to have us to introduce our book. Um, I hope, I really, really, truly hope it helps many, many writers to become a better writer, to become more aware, to become, you know, whatever they wish for themselves and their horse. Um, be safe out there. Yes, we see the comments. Um, if you if you feel like you have a horse that needs help, have someone help you. Have someone hold the horse. It's right. absolutely okay. Um, we we do say that in the book. Um, safety is mm -hmm. always first. But also enjoy and have fun with it. Right. And, and you know your horse, your own limitations, your horse's limitations. So this is, you know, another example where you don't just start at the beginning of the book and go the whole way through. You do the things that you can do and the things that work for you, your horse and your situation. Right. I, and I think exactly, I, I think starting with the breathing and just mm -hmm. trying to connecting with your horse would be like a great first thing to start. It's awesome. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And we're going to talk about uh, our book giveaway and we shall see you later. Any final words, Danny? No, thank you again. And uh, thank you, Natalie, for putting all the you know great words with it. And uh, yeah, thanks Laura, for having us. Yeah. All right. Thanks for having us, Laura and Danny. You are just amazing. It's been a really fun project <laughs> doing this together. All right. So you guys, thank you so much. Become a thinking rider and understand your horse and go use this stuff. Have some guts. Go use this stuff. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.